Hello and welcome, this is Business Time and my name is William Kumwembe. It is a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. And coming up in the program today, we speak to industry captains how businesses are faring as coronavirus cases seem to go down and borders seem opening as we speak. Also in the program, debate rages on whether to or not to ban imports of second-hand clothes. We speak to some traders what this means to them. We have these and other stories. Stay tuned if you could. Hello and welcome, this is Business Time. In our main story in the program today, COVID-19 has not spared any of the sectors in the economy. Of course, impact of the pandemic is still being felt despite a registered deceleration in number of new cases. Some business players say there is now hope as cases seem to drop compared to the case some five, six months ago. Our journalist Chimwemwe Mangaz went into the streets of Blanda to speak with some of the people that are applying trade in the commercial capital to see how they are faring as uh, countries seem to open up following uh, scrapping off of some restrictions of lockdowns in those countries. In an interview, Director of Business Environment and Policy Advocacy at the Malawi Confederation of Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Madali Zembe said businesses continue to face a number of challenges ranging from liquidity constraints due to suppressed demand and reduced export receipts for exporters. In a separate interview, Chief Executive Officer of Sunbed Tourism Limited, Yusuf Olera, said business has picked up a bit since September but still very low that the volume can hardly sustain the business. It has been almost two months now since the government started easing up on COVID-19 restrictions. But how are businesses faring after the COVID-19 era that took almost six months of the year that businesses had drastically slowed? We spoke to some of the businesses in Blanta and they are indicating that they have lost at least 60% of the business and only 30% is coming back. Uh, business is going on well so so because of COVID-19. Because we had the, this problem of COVID-19 since it started here in Malawi. Uh, business people like us were uh, completely down because people had no money, they have struggled to get money because everyone was afraid of COVID-19. The, the, uh, the government said uh, all people should stay at home this affected us. School, schools they closed. Everything was uh, was in vain. So, uh, because COVID nineteen now is uh, coming down, uh, our businesses are still on problems because people have no money. They are not uh, traveling as uh, they were traveling. But uh, so to get money, companies to pay us after delivering some goods. They are failing to pay us because the, the, the business in Malawi are all um, hit by uh, this COVID-19 problem. Yeah, to say the truth, it's about 60% of it. 30%, yes, we are struggling, but 60% uh, is uh, the percentage I can give it. I think the best way the, the uh, government can do is maybe to assist these small businesses to have money, maybe from money for the banks, so that they can recover their, their problems of COVID-19. Uh, we can say it's a little bit picking, uh, differentiating with uh, which, which has been happening uh, in the, uh, some months ago. Yeah. Uh, we can say we are now at 60 to 70 percent. Uh, we can see the bright future, that things are now starting working. So we hope and believe we'll reach where we were before. Well, um, the thing is, uh, it's like 
the situation is a kind of being promising because um, we've been expecting a lot from the government and um, with the, the fact that uh, so many ministries within the government system, they are moving up and down trying to find out, gathering information as to how uh, we SMEs or Malawian entrepreneurs can actually contribute a lot to the economic development of, of, of our country. President of the Cross-Border Traders Association of Malawi, Esther Chukambiri, added that most small-scale traders are currently operating between Malawi and Zambia when 90% of the businesses operate with South Africa. She urged the authorities to engage counterparts in Mozambique and Zimbabwe to ensure the Bed Bridge route is cleared for business resumption. When all is said and done, there is need for deliberate initiatives by the government to ensure that businesses are revitalized to get back to where they were before the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, Kaunjika is one of the most popular businesses in the country. There's been debate lately on whether there is a need or not to ban imports of second-hand clothes into the country. But those that are for the view are of the view that putting a ban would ensure that they are promoting local producers and the industry instead of exporting labor. Others feel if they put a ban on Kaunjika imports, it would mean squeezing on Malawians, the majority of whom still live on less than a dollar a day. Our journalist has more in this report. Rachel Minifumbo, 45, makes ends meet through second-hand clothes business known as Kaunjika. She has two children. They both depend on the business. She has been plying the trade since 2008 here at Blantyre Market. By Malawi, this is the only and I'm a guru. I find this is the same as the same the Buy Malawi strategy is where people buy things at a higher cost if you compare with the prices for second-hand clothes. People buy locally manufactured clothes through the Buy Malawi strategy. So are they telling us that people dealing with poverty can manage those clothes? It's impossible. Calls of others across the country are in the same trade. It has been gaining momentum lately for an obvious reason. Second-hand clothes are relatively cheaper than locally produced textile. Why? Because cost of production is very high in the country compared to European counterparts and China, where most of the commodities come from. Just less than 10 kilometers from the Blanta Central Business District is Blanta Textiles, one of the local garments producers. To the firm, it is almost impossible to make inroads into the local market, as laments its chairperson, Hastings Chauluka. The second-hand clothes are hindering very much. Uh, on our on our uh, production capacity, you know, uh, most of us who are in the textile industry, maybe uh, for us to for us to do well, uh, it is a little bit difficult because most of the people goes for uh, second-hand clothes. When uh, if uh, I mean, if there is uh, a ban on the second-hand clothes, obviously we we'll have uh, our capacity will be built and it will, pull, it will push us into mass production, thereby uh, it will even push us into buying materials in back, cutting off our production cost. Debate arose recently on whether to or not to ban importing of second-hand clothes. Proponents of the idea feel doing so would protect local producers, save forex, and minimize level of exporting labor. Opponents believe it would be punitive to majority Malawians, who are in abject poverty and cannot afford cost of brand new clothes. Second-hand clothes are better. It's hard for us to afford clothes that are sold in shops due to how much we earn. For instance, I'm able to buy a shirt at 500 waja. That would cost me 5,000 waja in a shop. So due to how much we earn, it's better not to ban selling 700 Malawi, a predominantly importing and consuming nation, still grappled to realize its dream of becoming a producing and exporting nation. The government is championing the Best Buy Malawi initiative to entice locals to consume locally made products. But its impact is yet to be felt, says Minister of Industry Roy Kachele. I will be quick to point out that uh, Kaunjiga is is an issue that we are treating very seriously because it has some serious economic uh, and uh, um, 
uh, political implications. Um, we, we, we know how people feel about Kaunjika. There's a group of people that feel that we should ban it. There's a whole different group that feels that we shouldn't. And uh, it requires uh, some seriousness in, in treating that matter because it's a serious issue. And my colleague, the Minister of Trade, is looking at that matter with the seriousness it requires. That uh, whatever decision is going to be made by government, it should be one that is going to benefit all Malawians and not just one section. The surging demand of Kaunjika clothes remains a tip on the iceberg of how volatile the economy is in a country where the negative trade balance continues to worsen. Growing appetite for imported goods among majority Malawians and failure by the country to advance the import substitution agenda continues to affect Malawi's trade competitiveness. Latest figures from Reserve Bank of Malawi show that from January to September 2020, trade deficit stood at 1.5 billion US dollars, compared to a deficit of 1.1 billion US dollars recorded in a corresponding period of 2019. From a look of things, it appears that the dream is far from being attained. Now, cryptocurrency is becoming popular, especially in European countries. Here in Malawi, it remains an illegal tender. Of course, the Reserve Bank of Malawi recently involved some stakeholders, especially financial experts as well as legal experts, to discuss the advantages and the disadvantages of adopting the digital money, among other things. Our journalist Chimwemwe Mangaz was there and now reports. Use of digital currency remains illegal according to the central bank despite being used in some circles as a medium of exchange or means of payment. Cryptocurrency is a digital asset designed to work as a medium of exchange that uses strong cryptography to secure financial transactions, control the creation of additional units, and verify the transfer of assets. RBM General Counsel and Bank Secretary George Chiwoza said on the sidelines of the Financial Services Lawyers Conference that Malawi is yet to decide on use of digital currency. In 2018, uh, at a mandatory policy conference, uh, we had uh, some presentations on uh, cryptocurrencies um, where really the basics of cryptocurrencies uh, were discussed. Um, secondly, I should mention that the Financial Action Task Force, which is an international body that regulates um, money laundering issues, has um, guided that each and every country should indicate um, precisely whether within their jurisdictions they do allow cryptocurrencies or not. In Malawi, we have not we have not yet come out with that position. That's why today uh, our final presentation is actually on cryptocurrencies. ICT Association of Malawi President Bram Fuzulani holds that Malawi needs cryptocurrencies. I think I think looking at the technology developments that are happening in our country, uh, you're you're talking about a country that is still grappling with the regulatory framework for the financial technology. Uh, this is to allow the coexistence of the, the financial technology players as well as the traditional banks uh, in a more suitable way that promotes uh, interoperability, also promotes the competition. Uh, so I think to, to speak about the cryptocurrency, it, it, it would be I mean, it's something that we need as a country, and I think it's something that uh, fintechs actually bring in the market. But until we deal with the fundamental issues that we still have on our plate, uh, uh, then, you know, speaking about cryptocurrency will be just us uh, dreaming uh, to join bigger countries while we have not addressed our own fundamental issues uh, locally. So, I mean, the issue of the cyber security or cyber, uh, cyber theft is something that, uh, you know, not only developing nations grapple with, but even those countries that are, you know, already developed. It is an issue that deals uh, heavily on uh, capacity building, but also consumer awareness and protection. So what we're seeing in Malawi, especially with the mobile money uh, theft, uh, is maybe lack of uh, you know public awareness 
In 2015, Global Money Laundering and Terrorism Financing Watchdog, the Financial Action Task Force, asked countries to indicate whether within their jurisdictions they allow cryptocurrencies or not. Remember, this is Business Time, a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. When we get back, women organization says they are advancing the agenda of ensuring that women take a critical role in decision making as well as economic development. That's when we get back inside Business Time. Now, there's been a heated debate on gender equality in the country. Activists are calling for equal opportunities for both men and women in decision making and each and every sector of the economy. Recently, a forum of women held a conference in Salima to discuss the role of women in economic development. Justin Kwe was there and filed this report. According to the chairperson of the society, Teresa Magreta, they selected the theme also to enlighten women that without them in key decision-making positions, the economy cannot run properly. We chose this theme of uh, women hinges for socio-economic growth because we know in everything, woman is there. So we want to encourage women that they can't just sit down, but they are the engines of socio-economic growth because without them, the economy cannot move well and the world can be stagnant without women. That's why we chose this theme as uh, women engines for socio-economic growth. We saw women discussing issues concerning the, the, the sister society, how to grow the sister society. We also discussed on how to come up with strategic plan. We have to be guided on what we're going to do and also to support other women who are not yet members. And also we say for us to grow, we need to fundraise money because we can't just depend on our circles and our companies. But as women, we need to take a step with the theme of women, uh, the engines for socio-economic growth, we say we should demonstrate, we have to demonstrate what we are talking about. The conference discussions centered on how the grouping can source money for its sustainability, how women can manage emotional intelligence, how they can place themselves in key decision-making positions, and how they can be successful in businesses. One of the speakers, Pamela Mkwamba Matumbi, who is a member of UN Circle, focused on emotional intelligence, which she said is important because it has the power to make or break a woman. I was sharing those with my fellow ladies because I know that uh, as ladies, one of the key challenges that we meet at the workplace is the issues around not only assertiveness, but understanding how emotion influences uh, leadership. For instance, we have uh, so many women that are capable that can be able to move national agenda. But because of the fact that they don't know how to manage emotional intelligence, sometimes they are left behind. And as a fact, their leadership skills or qualities are not, they don't come out. So it is just a matter of encouraging the ladies there, the women there in this movement to say, you know what, if you are here, you are capable. If you are here, you can be able to manage you know, uh, your workplace. You can be able to be an influencer. To, you know, when we say an influencer, someone who can be able to push change, someone who can be able, people can look up to as a leader. So we're just trying to encourage them that, you know, they can be able to do all that as long as they understand what it takes to be someone who has those qualities of emotional intelligence. You look in, in our country right now, who are the biggest producers in the small uh, farming or whatever industry? It's the women. It's the women that are actually digging the land, tilling the land, you know. If you go to uh, workplaces, say care work, it's the women. GWLN Malawi Sister Society is a grouping that consists of women who are employees and members of different savings and credit cooperatives in the country. Malawi Union of Savings and Credit Cooperatives, Musco Chief Executive Officer Fumban Nyanguru, said the platforms are important for the sharing of ideas and encouraging each other for success. He said it is now time for men to create space for women in order for them to show and maximize their potential. 
Let there be light. This is the message Energy Generation Company of Malawi, Agenco, has been preaching since it was birthed out of Electricity Supply Corporation of Malawi, ESCOM. Of course, for years now, the country has been grappling with persistent power outages due to low supply of electricity, as the country heavily relies on hydro as the source of energy. Recently, uh, Agenco connected Chizumula and Rikoma Islands with uh, uh, electricity run by solar. What does this mean to people of Chizumulu and Lekoma Islands? We caught up with a Genco spokesperson Moses Gwaza. The project was completed successfully. What we are doing now is final touches uh, in terms of commissioning. So since the uh, last two days uh, people have been using power from Lekoma solar. So that's very good news. As for Chizumulu, Work is now at 98%, so we're just dealing with a few, just dealing with a few things that we need to finalize, and then we can also start beginning to uh, give people from uh, the zoom power from the solar panels as well. Well, we are receiving very good feedback. Um, we are receiving calls that now this is life that we have always wanted. Uh, this is good. Um, because it is indeed good, because we believe that with now power uh, 24 hours, uh, there, there are two sides to the issue. First is that I think people's livelihoods is going to improve, uh, because people are now going to have power 24 hours. We believe that the economic activities on the island is going to improve. And the, as you may be aware, Likoma is one of the uh, tourism destinations in the country. So we believe that uh, tourism is also going to improve because now there is going to be reliable power 24 hours every day. And the, on our part as a company, uh, we are going to reduce in terms of operational expenses, especially uh, the money that we were spending to buy diesel. You may wish to know that we were spending about 13 million watt a month just for Likoma and about uh, 5 million watts, in total about 18 million just to buy uh, diesel. But also to get this fuel from the mainland to the islands, it was a headache, it was not easy. The, pro the processes were very cumbersome, so we believe that with the coming in of uh, the solar power, we should be able to save these resources and channel them towards other uh, services that we can do to improve our generation capacity. This is a combined project. We were doing it for both Likoma and Chizumu and we have spent about 3.2 billion watch. And these are resources that we have generated within a jungle. We did not get a bank loan or uh, any support from outside. So we are very proud as a company that we can channel some of the resources that we generate towards improving uh, the capacity of our generation. Well, with that story, we've also come to the end of today's edition of the program Business Time. It is a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. On behalf of the entire production team, my name is William Kumwembe. Always remember, if it doesn't make money, then it doesn't make sense. Stay safe and bye for now.